Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection as usual. Um, today, a funny mixture between like kind of Euclidean geometry, so a geometry of the plane, circles, uh, circles are very much Euclidean geometry, and graphs, which doesn't quite to see seem to go along very well, but actually it, it fits together via the so-called circle packing theorem. Um, which is a bit surprising, actually. It's a very nice connection between, well, circles and graphs and back. So let's see a connection between Euclidean geometry, so kind of very classical Euclidean geometry, and graph theory. So graph theory is usually pretty cool, and here's another application of graph theory. So the question is actually pretty simple. I have some circles, or uh, <laughs> in this case, some kind of lemons or something, uh, and I just want to uh, kind of pack them into, well, R2, okay? So I just really Euclidean geometry, very, very classical. I want to pack them into R2 such that, well, they don't overlap because it's R2 and they're kind of as uh, closely packed as possible. So it's an arrangement of circles and without possible enlargements. So something like this, a lot of circles here. So here's a circle and it's, this was a really bad circle. Anyway, it's touching this circle and this is touching this circle. Uh, obviously the picture you see here is not perfect because it's a real world picture, but I hope you get the point. And there are many ways to do that. You can think about infinite circles. You can try to fill in circles into a given area or something, but I just want to park finally many circles in the plane. That's all I want to do. And Kind of, I would like to ask the question, is there anything you can really say about those uh, circle packings in the plane in the sense that can we actually generate them in some way or do they correspond to other interesting objects? Do they have any properties of any kind of form? So that's the setup for this video, just circles in the plane and they touch one another. Here's another circle. Um, so something like here's a circle, here's a circle, here's a circle. Uh, here's a circle. This must be a, a packing with four circles, and they touch one another. It will overlap, and uh, you can't really uh, make it kind of finer without possible enlargement here, because everything is kind of stuck. That's what I would like to study. Um, and that's called these are called circle packings. And as I said, the precise version I would like to do is that just finitely many. I don't want to do anything fancy with infinitely many circles, and I park them in R two. So I don't have even an abounding um, kind of uh, area that I would like to fill. I just have R2, which is not, not very bounded. So here's maybe a better picture of what a circle packing is. Well, actually, I like the picture with the, uh, with the fruits, but obviously it's not perfect because uh, real world is never as perfect as mathematics or mathematics is never real world, whatever you want, want to say. Anyway, here's a circle packing, um, clearly. And that's one of the ones I would like to consider it lives again in R2. It kind of sits very nicely here in our little R2 space. And what I will do is now the following. I will associate a graph to uh, a packet. So, and it's called the intersection graph. It comes into various names. Let me just call it the intersection graph in this video. And the vertices of this graph are the midpoints. Here's a vertex of the circles. Here's another vertex. Uh, here's another vertex and so on. So the midpoints of the circles are uh, the vertices of the graph, and we draw an edge whenever circles touch. So this circle here, the green one, and let's say the light blue one, they touch. So as you can see, so we draw a line between the two vertices and so on. So here, this black circle and the blue circle, they touch. So we draw a line between them and so on. And we just do that for everything and we get a uh, graph, which is called the intersection graph. Well, this is kind of easy. It's kind of nice. It's a kind of nice way to go from, from circuit packings to graphs, but just use the midpoints and just, uh, well, intersections are uh, given, uh, sorry, uh, touching is given, giving the edges. Um, but it's absolutely not clear whether you can somehow go back. So kind of the, the main point is circle packings might be a little bit tricky to find. Graphs are easy to find. So maybe there's a way to go from graphs to circles as the opposite operation of what we see here, uh, the intersection graph. 
that's not so clear actually but the point is well that's the point why i'm making this video i guess that it actually does work so you can go from uh well, we'll see what in a second what it is with a planar graph. So here's a planar graph. You can go to an intersection picture in such a way that it's really the, the reverse, the converse of what we did. So if you would have the circles, then you could go back to the graph. So it's a back and forth process. So everything here uh, correspond to this one here. So here, this one here is the red circle, of course. Um, the one down here is the purple circle. Uh, there's a very, very tiny green circle here, and uh, there's a yellow circle here, and there's finally the blue circle here. And as you can see, the graph here on the left-hand side is a kind of a perfect representation of the circle circles on the right-hand side. But it's absolutely not clear that this actually works, because kind of, kind of green gets a very small circle, uh, while blue gets a very big circle, and so on. But actually, um, there's a type of graph for which we can go backwards. And I'm going to tell you in a second with what kind of graphs these are. And you can actually reverse the process, which is very surprising because somehow, in particular, the sizes of uh, the circles that you need are not really encoded in the graph, where it's at least not obvious how they are encoded in the graph, but you can still read them off. So it's that there's a precise algorithm going from left to right. Um, the algorithm of going from right to left is pretty simple. It was this midpoint construction intersection graph, but going from left to right is absolutely not obvious, but it actually works. And that's the theorem for today. So for every circle packing, we have a connected simple planar graph. So the planar graph just means you can draw it in the plane without crossing intersections. And for every such graph, there is a circle packing. Um, there might be actually more circle packings, or the circle packings look a little bit different. So you need to be a bit careful. Uh, so from here to here, for example, the circle packings look a little, little bit different. So you need kind of, kind of the appropriate notion of equivalence of circle packings to make that uh, kind of a back and forth operation. But it's still very surprising that there is a way to go from any kind of planar graph to, um, to a circle packing. And there's an algorithm that does that. Oh, there are many algorithms that actually do that. And I think that's a pretty cool picture because that's how you can generate circle packings. You just draw a planar graph. So a graph without intersecting edges and uh, the picture works. Strictly speaking, if you're an expert on planar graphs, you might complain now that I actually have chosen a plane graph, which is the only difference. So planar versus plane, plane uh, with an E at the end which is the difference is that plane means I fixed an embedding. So I fixed a, a form of my graph, while planar just means you can do it. So I should have written plane here, but I go with a more familiar name, planar. Anyway, so the point is, um, they are really kind of cool, uh, algorithmic ways to going from planar graphs to circle packings, and they're essentially the same beasts, which is kind of a cool theorem and it's relatively new. Um, if you think about this being kind of part of Euclidean geometry, um, a graph from uh, a theorem from, uh, not very hard to prove, but a theorem from uh, the birth of graph theory in the 50s, 60s, 70s of the last century. And that's pretty cool. So it gives you a useful tool in general, kind of if you generalize it or adjust it a little bit to uh, have a way to attack geometry problems using graph theory. Um, and that's pretty cool, actually. So let me show you one of them, for example. Um, there's a very specific form of graph, which is called a coin graph or a penny graph. A penny graph is exactly what you think it is. So now my, well, let's compare. I started with, I guess, fruits, and now I end with pennies. And the difference between fruits and pennies, the only difference, as you all know, between fruits and pennies, is that pennies have a fixed size, while fruits vary in size. That's the only difference between the two. Anyway, just kidding here, of course. Um, so the point is, a penny is always of the same uh, diameter, so they're all or radius, whatever you want to call it. Um, so they're all of the same uh, size. They're all equal, equal radii, and um, having a circle packing with equally spaced circles, it's kind of a special property. Look at those circles, they're certainly not of equal size. Uh, here, certainly not if you think about this little green one inside. 
So this is a very, very specific packing. Um, and here I kind of kind of wanted to sell the idea that planar graphs help to study, um, well, circle packings. But the converse is also true. Kind of geometry helps to study planar graphs. And it turns out that the penny graphs are much easier. So penny graphs are just intersection graphs of, well, circle packings of equal ready. And they're just much easier than general graphs. They look still quite general. If you, if you have this class of penny graphs, it's pretty, pretty large, but they're much easier than general graphs. For example, the famous four color theorem, which is essentially impossible to prove for general planar graphs, is really straightforward in some sense for penny graphs. And so uh, just they have nicer associated geometry, so they're nicer graphs. And so you can also go the other way around. You can use nice geometry to create nice questions in graph theory. Anyway, so the point of this video was to show you a connection between two seemingly very different uh, objects, namely circle packings from Euclidean geometry and graphs from, I guess, graph theory. Um, and there's a back and forth between actually the two theories, so really between the two parts of mathematics, which is kind of beautiful and it works in a really cool way. I gave you this example of penny graphs, which are just a large class of graphs that are much easier than the general case. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.